This is a tribute back to the old times of our grandfathers and great-grandfathers that worked these old coal seams through these mountains. The hard times they had, the struggle of trying to make a living in this old coal. And this is their story. Now this is coal mining of today. Here's an old shuttle car. And if you don't know what a shuttle car is, this is more or less like a truck. It goes between the miner at the base that's cutting the coal and takes it back to the belt line so he can be hauled outside. And you can see, even today, with all the modern safety is still a dusty environment at times. And even with all the modern safety nowadays, it's still one of the dangerous occupations of all time. Mine. This is one that's cleaning up. Now this is an old continuous miner. The miner of today. This is what she looks like. This is what cuts the coal. For those of you that don't know, this machine can cut more coal and load it in one minute than one good loading man back in the days could load all day long. It can move some coal. And nowadays, the remote, back in my day, the remotes were just coming out and we would run in the deck and operate. Now here's a bolt machine. What's a bolt machine? This is what bolts the top up, holds the loose rock up right above your head. And they drill it up, whatever their bolting plan is, of the length bolts they use. They use glue bolts. And here they're just adding extension onto their steel to drill their hole to stick their bolt up in. And this is how they hold to support the top nowadays. Back then, it was only timber. This is a noisy job. This is the most dangerous job in the mines, in my opinion, being under that unsupported top. And you see them sliding the glue bolt up, spinning it, and it tightens up in just a few seconds. The glue sets up. Now, a lot of people think coal mining is the same as rock mining. It's completely different. The only thing they have in common, they're underground. Here's rock mining. It's just like being an underground strip guy. I've been in places that you light wouldn't even hit the top. It's be so high. But coal mining, you're mining the coal seam, whatever the seam of that height of that seam is. It could be six or eight foot. It could be down to 17 to 20 inches. That's just coal mine. But anyway, that's what people think it is. There's nothing to do. There's nothing the same. But they're both dangerous occupations. Anytime you work with rock over your head, it's an extreme and dangerous environment. Now these old Appalachian Mountains, Mountain after mountain down this Appalachian chain is loaded with coal. And they've mined it for over a hundred years. And people want you to think nowadays that coal's a bad name, a four-letter word. Now coal is used so much more in different products. You can research it than just making electricity or generating heat. But this coal is what fueled the Industrial Revolution and built all the steel for these cities over the last hundred years or so. So it can, it, it can be burnt cleanly too. They've got the technology, but if they want to invest in it. This coal and built all these little communities for over a hundred years. And so many people worked in them 
so many people didn't ever come home from being in. It's a dangerous occupation. But I'm going to share with you how our ancestors, our great-grandfathers, their grandfather, for over a hundred years, mined this coal. The unsafe conditions they worked, what the conditions their family had to work in, and the struggles they had to try to make it better for future generations. Now, back in the early days of mining, there was no really no labor laws. So kids as young as eight years old, I've heard, worked in the mine. Little old bitty thing. But they, they, that's all they had to take care of their family. They had no choice. And here they started to mount places like this, picking slate out of the coal come down the chutes and you could see the form in there with a little wheel to keep their attention going and they mostly after they growed up a little more they, they take care of the ponies and the mules and the animals that carried the coal in and out and they, they kept these animals underground all the time but once a week they would bring them out because they'd go blind if they did and they would have them doing stuff like checking the doors, opening the ventilation doors, and they finally got these labor laws passed in 1938. And they had all kinds of animals. They had goats, oxen, even dogs. So they, they had all kinds of animals, but they mostly used mules and horses in these mines, whatever the scene would allow, how, how the hive was. And they took care of them too. This was their work machine before the machines come into mining or industrial change. And they took care of them and they took care of each other. So they made good work team. Now these, these seams of coal Here's a real high seam of coal. That's good working right there. Good working seam. They had to hand pick this stuff. But what about seams like this? These seams that got down to 16, 17 inches. I can't imagine working nothing like that. Bless their hearts. What a job. What a job. No ventilation worth the crap. They they worked hard at this. Worked hard. And to support the top, before roof boats come up, they use timber. Especially when there's pillars, so they know the top will sit down. You could see it break. And they'd had to work in these conditions. Go right by it every day. I know they was nervous. Bad situation. If you've never heard a rock fall, here's what they sound like. This is a rock fall. Timbers are breaking around you. And that's a nervous feeling, I'm telling you. And a lot of them, unfortunately, a lot of men died this rocks scaling down between these timbers and boats. No change. You're at the wrong place at the wrong time. A dangerous occupation. And here's what a roof log looks like. It's just rock sets down in between the, the entry that you cut. And they worked in some dangerous conditions. But they had no choice. They wanted to keep their job. But this is the worst thing that they always, ever, always feared in the mine. They exploded. Of all the things in the mines, this is the worst. 
Most died in the explosion, but some did. But the worst one was in 1907 in West Virginia. 362 miners died in an explosion. But some that didn't die in these explosions, they barricaded themselves off. They wasn't close enough that the concussion didn't get them. So they got bad air, they bratted themselves off. But they didn't nobody come to save them in time, so they run out of air. Here's a sad letter of one of many. One of the men left his family. So when they did come to them, this is what they found. They never survived. But still, life went on in these mines. Had to work. Before electricity and industrial age, they used hand drills like this. But as they got electricity in the mines, they used an old breast hog. Drill their holes for shooting. And as electricity come on in the mines and started using machinery, this is a cutting machine. It cut under the coal so they could make it easier to shoot. And they'd load this powder in there as they drilled their holes. And they'd shoot it down. But they still had the hand load. They wasn't that advanced yet. Had to hand load this coal into them cars. What back-breaking work all day long in that dust. But as they got better, they, they didn't use mules much anymore. They used trolley poles, electricity, to pull these cars out. Now these men, they were a tight-knit family. They worked together, and most of them were family members. Young and old. And they worked as a team, and they were just like a family in their cell. And it didn't matter what color you was either. If you were willing to work, they'd work you. And they lived in places like this, their family, these coal camps, mining camps, all across the Appalachia. Really not far from the mines at all. Just down the hill or just over around the ridge, down the holler. Places like this. And they didn't have no electricity, no running water. They had to get their water in places like this. And they even had their own disasters. Here's a Tornado hit in Pruden, Tennessee, 1933. Wiped the camp out. A lot of died there. And they paid their men in scrip. Most of the mines. Here's some scrip from different mines in different areas. This is what they paid them in. But the scrip was only good at the company store. And the company store could charge whatever they wanted. So they had you pretty good. It wasn't long before using daddy to them. So you had to work to feed your family. And you can only buy stuff at the company store. Well, it was just seems like a, just like a rat race. You can't win. The more you work, the more you're in debt. So a lot of people left these mountains. They wasn't going to do this kind of work. They just wasn't going to do it. They headed to the city, working the car factories and stuff. But a lot did. One thing about these old Appalachians is either coal mines, moonshine, or moving on down the line. And a lot moved on down the line. Well, it got better, though, in the coal mines. The men was going to see to that. They was tired of being rough-shotted, working under unsafe conditions. So they tried to join and form the union. But it wasn't no easy struggle. The UMW was started in 1890. But it really got popular and it growed really big back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. This is John L. Lewis. 
down in mine work. And the government didn't like these big strikes. They even brought troops in to make sure they mined coal. But it didn't do them no good. I remember John L. Lewis saying that you can't bind coal with bayonets. In the long run, they won out. But there was a lot of struggles went on. Especially this one here. Blair Mountain, West Virginia, Logan and Mingo County, 1921. 16 miners died in this war. Bad time to organize. But this is what they're fighting for, stuff like this. This ain't nothing today, but back in the day, that was big money. Here's the wages they fight for in the UMWA contract. Now, these men, so many died in explosions, mine accidents, or crippled up. But as of date of 1900 to 2022, there's 66,000. 172 miners have died in the coal mine. And the ones that survived, they're old timers, of all this bad stuff, so many succumbed to black lung, slow, debilitating death. So many in these mines. So I owe a tribute to these old miners. They made the conditions safer for what it is now. People don't understand. That's part of part of our heritage up down these Appalachia Mountains. About everybody could say that in their family. So I hope you watch these and enjoy these little videos of our old times of our people and their struggle. Now I've got many a many a video on these coal mines. You can just go to my channel, look down my playlist, mining, and you'll see all kinds of good and bad. So I want to thank you for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.